If you are black and you're a Chicagoan, if you are black and you are familiar with the story of Emmett Till, if you are black, if your parents know or knew anything about Emmett Till, which I know damn well they did, if you are black, if you've ever had a white woman switch her purse from one arm to the other while walking down State Street towards each other en route to Foot Locker, if you are black and you got all dressed up like you personally were going to be in an African wedding, just to go see the Black Panther movies. If you are black, then you are required by the black delegation and Dr. Umar Johnson to go see this movie immediately. My man, Dr. Umar Johnson is currently building a hospital for coons. What's good with it, people? Welcome to the Joe Blackula Perspective presents Behind the Curtain, and I am your host, the infamous Joe Blackula. Cue my drop. Joe Blackula. Good looking out. Till was released in limited release in theaters on Friday, October the 14th, 2022. Nationwide on Friday, October the 28th, 2022. Has a running time of two hours and 10 minutes. Rated PG-13. I'm assuming that's because of the visuals. And is distributed and released by MGM Orion Pictures. Orion Pictures, that's real personal for me because I grew up remembering that opening shot of space. Those spinning stars that made the letter O, and then the Orion graphic appeared. Plus my middle name is Orin, and I think at one point in time I actually pronounced it Orion. I actually kind of think that it's pronounced Orion. I'm not really clear on that one. My mother and father ain't here anymore for me to ask them. But when my daughter Justice was born, I made her an official Orion, spelled in the exact same way of the spelling of the company. Now, being a Chicagoan of a certain age, the story of Emmett Till has been a part of the foundation of my entire life. Hell, most of our lives. But like I said, most of us of a certain age, we've all heard the different stories of what was thought, thought of what happened to Emmett Till. And we had all seen the pics of what Emmett's body had looked like after he was murdered, body decomposed, and put on display by his mother Mamie for the entire world to see what those crackers did to her only son Emmett. Well, what this movie confirmed is that I thought I knew. Yeah, no. Thought wrong, Russell. Till at the root of it, once you get past all of the martyrdom that our black organizations were rightfully so putting on Emmett Till's death, this movie is about the painful grief of a young mother dealing with the death of her only 14 year old son. And when I say that her grief is on the screen, you have to have had a heart like Hitler not to have felt this woman's pain. Damn. I saw several people that I recognized in the cast. Of course, Whoopi Goldberg, who plays the mother of Mamie. Frankie Faison plays Mamie's dad. Always good to see Frankie. Frankie has always reminded me of my Uncle Bub, but know that he will be forever recognized as wanting that rent from Stu. Hey, Stu, your rent's due, motherfucker. Okay, now what the fuck do you want? Roger Guinevere Smith, an alumni of the Spike Lee camp. Roger plays Dr. T.R.M. Howard. Had to look him up to find out more exactly about who he was. Kevin Carroll plays Rayfield Moody. My mans will forever be Calvin from Paid and Full. Yes, I'm aware that he's also Franklin Saint's dad in Snowfall, but still. Sean Patrick Thomas played Gene. I'm looking at my man's face in this movie and I'm trying to figure out where do I know you? And then it came back to me Barber Shop. And that other dance movie that was made in Chicago with Julia Stiles that to this day I have not seen yet. Was it Save the Last Dance? I don't know because I haven't seen that movie. Didn't want to see it. Emmett Till is played by Jalen Hall and Mamie Till Mobley is played by Danielle Deadweiler. On site, I thought this sister was Taraji P. Henson. I mean, I'm saying they favor. Sidebar and dig this. In 2018, Taraji P. Henson was actually slated to produce and star in a biopic based on this story and John Singleton was on deck to direct. But man, this sister here, if she does not get nominated for an Academy Award, well, we all know how that goes every now and then. The problem is with us needing white validation all the damn time. Come on, 
come on, come on, come on. I was unfamiliar with this sister's face, won't be after today, and god damn she played the hell out of this role. Till is directed by a Nigerian sister with a beautiful name that I absolutely will butcher up if I even try to pronounce it. So I'm just gonna add it here as a lower third. She is also one of the screenwriters as well as the EP or executive producer. That's a big goddamn deal, you dig. So I can't call any of the scenes in this movie dope, but there are several scenes in this movie that got my attention. One of the opening scenes, they're going shopping at Marshall Fields here in Chicago. Chicagoans know the iconic clock when we see it. I'm paying attention to the Marshall Field fonts on the bags, looking at how the store was laid out on the inside. The scene established immediately that Chicago might not be located in the South, but please believe that white folk in 1955 had no problem with letting you know when they wanted you to get what you were going to get and then get to getting as my grandmother would have said. Another scene, nah, actually the entire movie, the attention to detail to everything, clothes, hair, cars, the newspapers, Jet, Jet Magazine. Jet Magazine was featured. Chicago, The Defender, Chicago, A.A. Rayner Funeral Home. Damn it, you ain't getting that much more Chicago and black and Southside than A.A. Rayner Funeral Home. All we would have needed after that would have been a shot or a visual of Harold's chicken. I'd have been mad as shit if they'd have done that. I would have laughed, but I'd have been mad as hell. I was even looking at the molding around the doors, the toys, the street signs, the clothes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! There's a scene when Mamie was having a discussion in the home that she was staying at once she arrived down south for trial. She's sitting in the dining room, at the dining room table, in focus. Slightly out of focus, in the foreground, you see this male figure walking, slowly pacing in front of the door, holding a shotgun. The focal point ain't really on the shotgun, it's of the moment, of the intensity of the conversation that they having. But what that said to me, even though we're in our community, in this crib, you can run up in here if you want. That, that was dope as hell. Man, let's talk about a heavy scene. There's also a courtroom scene. So I'm big on continuous shots because that's something that really ain't that common. But that courtroom scene when Mamie was giving her testimony, I'm telling you that scene started and did not cut for at least eight minutes. And that was a heavy scene. And the way this sister cried, stopped crying, started crying again, tears. Wiped them, tears again, and, and it's a close up on her face for the entire scene. Dope, heavy and dope. So let's talk heavy again. This whole damn movie is heavy, heavy as hell. One of the thoughts that I was having while I was watching the movie was if they were going to show a rendition of Emmett Till's body. Spoiler alert! So maybe technically this is a spoiler. Well, they did show the body, a rendition of the body, but it's not that they showed it, it's how they showed it. How they, let's say, unveiled it? Revealed it, that's a better word. The anticipation of how they revealed the body, how the camera actually hid the body within the frame, you'd have to see what I'm talking about. It was some type of item in the frame that was kind of interrupting the shot. But the way they brought that together between the director and the director of photography, genius. And the scene makes you actually marinate in the moment with Mamie. God damn it, I cried. Like, cried, cried. Man, I cried more in this movie than I ever have watching a movie. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna say that there are at least five moments in this movie where I ain't even bother trying to fight. And trust when I say that I was not the only one in the theater crying. So heads up, get a box of tissue for this one here, or if you're at the crib, get a whole roll of toilet paper. Two ply. Failed to mention, in January 2022, the six-part miniseries Women of the Movement aired on ABC and is based on the murder of Emmett Till and the story of Mamie as well. I had no idea that this series had even came on. Now, I might have seen the title on some promos or something, but in my mind, I would have been thinking that this series would have been based on women like Coretta Scott King, Merle Evers, Rosa Parks. That's only a few of them settled down. So yeah, I would have been interested 
interested, but not so much because it aired on network TV, you dig? So I find out what it's really about, that it's really about Emmett Till. So yeah, I'm actually glad that I didn't see that before I saw the theater version. So in 2021, one of those networks aired the Aretha series. I think it was Nat Geo. The sister that played Harriet Tubman in the movie, Harriet actually played Aretha in the series that I saw. This was maybe a year or so before the movie actually hit the theaters starring Chicago's own Jennifer Hudson. The series got layers deep with things that actually happened to Aretha Franklin in her life. But the movie version of it starred Jennifer Hudson actually gave like a more consolidated, compacted version of it. Now let's say Women of the Movement is the actual full version of what I needed to see. And Till is kind of the edited version of it. Now as of time of me shooting this, I haven't watched Women of the Movement. But better it up that I'm gonna watch it. Hold on, we are gonna have a problem if Women of the Movement is the actual full version of Till? Man. I don't really think that you can actually have too many versions of this story. Make all them cracker ass crackers down south feel bad. Make all them cracker ass crackers up north feel bad too. Come on, come on. Failed to mention. Also, I had no idea due to my own lack of whatever the hell, but I had no idea that Medgar Evers was part of Mamie Till's legal team. Who's Medgar Evers? Is that what you just asked yourself? Look him up. Google him like right now. You really should be ashamed of yourself. Right. Damn. Nerd alert. Okay, dig. So the movie Ghosts of Mississippi is based off of the murder of Medgar Evers. And Medgar's wife, Murley, in the movie of Ghosts of Mississippi was played by who? Whoopi Goldberg. Now coming back around full circle, Whoopi Goldberg is playing the mother of Mamie Till, as well as once again, one of the producers of the film. Sidebar. When I hear the phrase Grassy Knoll, I automatically always think of JFK, be it the actual assassination, or the film starring Kevin Costner. When I hear the phrase cotton gin fan, I immediately think about Emmett Till. And it took me years to actually learn what that actually is, was, is. Google cotton gin fan right now and look at what comes up. Watch. Oh man, in conclusion. Look, I was born in 1973 and in the 70s and in the 80s, there always seemed to be movies, TV shows, mini series that you absolutely had to see. I mean, these were like major events. And if you wasn't being part of the collective, then your blackness was actually being questioned and nobody wanted to be left out. Like required black community viewing you did. I remember Roots. I don't remember seeing it, but I remember everybody was talking talking about it. Then The Women of Brewster Place. Then Color Purple. A Soldier Story. The Godfather. I just threw The Godfather in there to see if you're paying attention. These movies are out of sequence so don't trip. The Cosby Show. Do the Right Thing. House Party. New Jack City. Boys in the Hood. Malcolm X. These few movies were on the must-see list. At some point down the line, things shifted, priorities changed, and those events fell off. Wasn't no real need anymore. No more call to black action alert. I have no idea what the hell happened. There was a groundswell with Tyler Perry in the 2000s and his crowd showed support, and rightfully so, but it wasn't the entire community. Hell, if I remember correctly, I actually think it was a split in the community about them damn Tyler Perry movies. And it still is. Now, the movie Black Panther comes out for Marvel in February of 2018, and I ain't gonna get too heavy with it, but for whatever reason, we as a community chose to mob up or mobilize for that movie, that Disney movie. Yeah, I get it, I was there too. I didn't go as far as taking part of that whole coming to America wedding scene, trick or treat spectacle demo, but yeah, I was there too. Here's my flat out point making it plain. This Till is one of the movies that we should have mobbed up and seen, rented out the theaters to have seen, especially if you're black and you've heard this story, especially if you're from Chicago and from the east side. I'm gonna get on my soapbox for a second, so yeah, I am about to get heavy with it. Yeah, damn that, this is the kind of shit that pisses me off about us, man. I honestly feel that there should not have been one empty seat in the theater that I was in. Mothers should have been in there with their sons. Fathers with your daughters. I have a feeling if I made 
mention an Emmett Till to somebody in the generation behind me, they'd be like, who? Is that a rapper? I'm split honestly between if they know or if they'd even care. And either scenario exists because it's our fault because we didn't teach them or teach them about the fact that it's important info to know. It ain't cool being deaf, dumb, and blind your entire life. To pass this information down, to keep it going, other than that, it just stops. So what I did was that I checked myself. Bro, how many black produced, black directed films have you seen lately? I'm talking to myself. Most importantly, specifically, how many black movies have you paid to see in the theaters on opening weekend? The answer would be none. I'm talking to myself. I had all intent on going to see Idris Elba and Beast. Idris and Will Packer, who was one of the producers of the movie, were both on The Breakfast Club promoting Beast before the movie was released in August of 2022. Will Packer explained his struggle with producing black movies in Hollywood, how important these opening weekend receipts are. Regina Hall shared her same story while she was on The Breakfast Club promoting her Honk for Jesus movie. I didn't see that one either in the theater. I heard it was pretty good and I will see it at some point. The Omar Epps movie, The Devil You Know, that one came and went right past me. Hell, I don't even think that I honestly watched the last three Kevin Hart movies on Netflix. That means that I honestly have to be more mindful with making sure that I get to the theaters and support our story so that more of them can get made. I said the same thing when I saw the movie Harry on my review of the movie Harry. Said the same thing when I saw the movie Judas and the Black Messiah. Bottom line, if the movies make money, Hollywood will make them. But in 2022, out of I don't know how many black movies were made, I only saw the one and that was Till. And damn it, I'm gonna try to do better from this point forward. My bro Reg told me that he falls back on certain types of movies because they make him feel a certain kind of way and I can dig that. 12 years of Butler or whatever the hell they were rolling out during that time period. Whenever I'm speaking of those slave themed movies that they were cranking out during that 2000 teens time period, I groove them all together and just call them 12 years of Butler. Who wants to go to a movie and be pissed off for two and a half hours? Wind up crying and shit got you questioning life? Hell, I can do that at the crib for free. Come on, shut the fuck up. But man, our history is painful and at the least we need to know. And as wild as this may sound, that pain needs to be communicated with the ones behind us that have absolutely no idea the struggles that we've truly had. And not the struggles of not catching those Jordan 4s before they went up at 10 o'clock in the morning on the sneakers app either. Plus, just like the movie of Judas and the Black Messiah, this is my mother's story. Emmett Till was born on July 25th, 1941. My mother, Rita Louise, was born on September 5th, 1941. It was a month and a half, something like that, six weeks between them. So I saw this movie for her and for all the others that were born at that time period that didn't make it to see this story hit the screen. Love, hate, or debate? Yeah, man, I loved this one. I loved this movie. There's no debate. Loved to hate it. Loved the movie, hate the damn story. Loved the way it's told. Loved the way that it came together. How many black fists? And this this movie has earned a solid four black, you know what, I'm gonna say four and a half. Four and three quarters. Four and three quarters black fists out of five. Why not five? Well, because I'm honestly suspect that they shot any of this movie in Chicago. It really shouldn't make a difference. I could have actually found out before I started shooting this, but I didn't. They didn't need to shoot it in Chicago, but it would have been nice to have seen the actual Marshall Fields buildings instead of whatever building that they used in the movie. It was close. They got the clock right though. And it does not get five fists because God damn it, it is not the Godfather. I will fight you over that statement. You know, going off script for a second, I listened to The Breakfast Club and trust when I say Charlemagne the God gets on my guy damn nerve. I find him bothersome at times because he's that dude that has to always remind you that he's right about something. Here's an example. I've been telling y'all for two weeks about this. I've been telling y'all for a month about this. I've been telling y'all for four months. He's one of them type of cats that always got to get right. He always got to have a last word and he's always going to talk over you. I don't like people like that. I do not get along with people like that. If you're anything like that, you'll know because I do my damnedest to keep my conversation on a slim mental with you. But one thing I will applaud brother for is that the very exact thing that I was speaking on earlier about renting out the theaters for the youth and just for black people period to be made aware of this story. He did that. I applaud the brother and damn it I 
wish I heard more stories like that. Not to say that there aren't any more like that, but that's the one that I'm aware of. Maybe I should Google it and see if there were more. We really need to do better with that type of shit. Square biz. All right, people, let's put a bow on this one because it is officially a wrap. Please like, share, subscribe, and whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let a brother know, and I will holler black in a few ticks in a minute, people. Shit.